already. So do you want me to start? Yep, that'd be great. Thanks, Cheryl. Let's okay. go. So these pages have been written for the purpose of furnishing you a key to the attainment of your desires and to explain that fear should be entirely banished from your con consciousness in order for you to obtain possession of the things you want. This presupposes, of course, that your desire for possession is based upon your aspiration for greater happiness. For example, you feel that the possession of more money, lands, or friends will make you happier, and your desire for possession of these things arises from the conviction that their possession will bring you freedom and contentment. In your effort to possess, you will discover that the thing you most need is to consistently be your best self. One morning after class, a man came to me and asked if I would speak the word of supply for him, as he was sadly in the need of money. He offered me a $5 bill with a remark, Dear Madam, that is half of every dollar I have in the world. I am in debt. My wife and child have not the proper clothing. In fact, I must have money. I explained to him that money was the symbol of differentiated substance, and uh, that this substance filled all space that it was present for him at the very moment and would manifest to him as the money he required. But he questioned, it may come too late. I told him it could not come too late as it was eternally present. He understood and got the uplift of my spoken word. I did not see the man again, but six months later, I had a letter from him stating he was in New Orleans. He said, I am well established here in my regular profession of photography. I own my own home, have, become, have an automobile of my own, and I'm generally prospering. And dear Mrs. Durant, I want to thank you for lifting me out of the depths that day in New York. Three days after I talked to you, a man whom I have not seen for years met me on the street. When I explained my situation to him, he loaned me the money to pay my bills and come down here. The enclosed check is to help you continue your wonderful work of teaching people how to mentally reach out and receive their never failing supply. I would not take anything from my understanding as you have given it to me. God bless. A feeling that greater possessions, no matter of what kind they may be, will of themselves bring contentment or happiness is a misunderstanding. No person, place, or thing can give you happiness. They may give you cause for happiness and a feeling of contentment, but the joy of living comes from within. Therefore, it is here recommended that you should make the effort to obtain the things which you feel will bring you joy, provided that your desires are in accord with the joy of living. It is also desired in this volume to suggest the possibilities in store for all who make persistent effort to understand the law of visualization and who make practical application of this knowledge on whatever plane they may be. The word effort, as here employed, is not intended to convey the idea of strain. All study and meditation should be without strain or tension. It has been my endeavor to show that by stating at the beginning of the creative action or mental picture, certain corresponding results are sure to follow. While the laws of the universe cannot be altered, they can be made to work under specific conditions, thereby producing results for individual advancement, which cannot be obtained under the spontaneous workings of the law provided by nature. However, far these suggestions I have given of the possibilities in store for you through visualizing, visual, vis, little brother, visualizing may carry you beyond your past experience. They nowhere break the continuity of the law of cause and effect. If through the suggestions here given, anyone is brought to realize that his mind is a center through and in which all power there is is in operation, simply waiting to be given direction 
in the one and only way through which it can take specific action. And this means reaction in concrete or physical form. Then the mission to which this book is dedicated has been fulfilled. Try to remember that the picture you think, feel, and see is reflected into the universal mind and by the na natural law of reciprocal action must return to you in either spiritual or physical form. Knowledge of this law of reciprocal action between the individual and the universal mind opens you free access to all you may wish to possess or to be. It must be steadfastly borne in mind that all this can be true only for the individual who recognizes that he derives his power to make an abiding mental picture from the all originating universal spirit of life and can be used constructively only so long as it employ, is employed and retained in harmony with the nature of the spirit which originated it. To ensure this, there must be no inversion of the thought of the individual regarding his relationship to this universal originating spirit, which is that of a son, through which the parent mind acts and reacts. Thus conditioned, whatever you think and feel yourself to be, the creative spirit of life is bound to faithfully reproduce in corresponding reaction. This is the great reason for picturing yourself and your affairs the way you wish them to be existing facts, though invisible to the physical eye and living in your picture. An honest endeavor to do this, always recognizing that your own mind is a projection of the originating spirit, will prove to you that the best there is is yours in all your ways. Chapter 1, Order of Visualization. This, the exercise of the visualizing faculty keeps your mind in order and attracts to you the things you need to make life more enjoyable in an orderly way. If you train yourself in the practice of deliberately picturing your desire and carefully examining your picture, you will soon find that your thoughts and desires proceed in a more orderly procession than ever before. Having reached a state of ordered mentality, you are no longer in a constant state of mental hurry. Hurry is fear and consequently destructive. In other words, when, you, when your understanding grasps the power to visualize your heart's desire and hold it with your will, it attracts to you all things requisite to the fulfillment of that picture by the harmonious vibrations of the law of attraction. You realize that since order is heaven's first law and visualization places things in their natural order, then it must be a heavenly thing to visualize. Everyone visualizes whether he knows it or not. Visualizing is the great secret of success. The conscious use of this great power attracts to you multiplied resources, intensifies your wisdom, and enables you to make use of advantages which you formerly failed to recognize. A lady once came to me for help in selling a piece of property. After I explained to her just how to make a mental picture of the sale, going through the details mentally, exactly as she would do if the property were sold. She came a week later and told me how one day she was walking along the street when the thought suddenly occurred to her to go and see a certain real estate dealer to whom she had not yet been. She hesitated for a moment when she first got the idea as it seemed to her that the man could not sell her property. However, upon the strength of what I told her, she followed the lead and went to the real estate man who sold the property for her in just three days after she had first approached him. This was simply following along with the natural law of demand and supply. We now fly through the air, not because anyone has been able to change the laws of nature, but because the inventor of the flying machine learned how to apply, apply nature's laws 
and by making orderly use of them, produce the desired result. So far as the natural 12 forces are concerned, nothing has changed since the beginning. There were no airplanes in the year one because those of that generation could not conceive the idea as a practical working possibility. It has not yet been done was the argument and it cannot be done. Yet the laws and materials for practical flying machines existed then as now. Charlotte tells us that the great lesson he learned from the airplane and wireless te telegraphy is the triumph of principle over precedent. The working out of an idea to its logical conclusion in spite of accumulated contrary testimony of all past experiences. Somebody else, Nicole, do you want to take over for a bit? Yep, I can go unless Rennie would like to have a turn. Okay, with such an example before you, you must realise that there are still greater secrets to be disclosed. Also, that you hold the key within yourself with which to unlock the secret chamber that contains your heart's desire. All that is necessary in order that you may use this key and make your life exactly as you wish it to be is a careful inquiry into the unseen causes which stand back of every eternal and visible condition, uh, sorry, external and visible condition. Then bring these unseen causes into harmony with your conception and you'll find that you can make practical working realities of possibilities which at present seem but fantastic dreams. A woman came to me in New York City asking for help as she was out of work. I spoke the word of ever-present supply for her and intensified it by mentally seeing the woman in the position she dreamed of but which she had been unable to make a practical reality. That same afternoon she telephoned and said she could hardly believe her senses as she had just taken exactly the kind of position she wanted. The employer told her that she had been wanting a woman like her for months. We all knew that the balloon was the forefather of the aeroplane. In 1766, Henry Cavendish, an English nobleman, proved that hydrogen gas was seven times lighter than air. From that discovery, the balloon came into existence and from ordinary balloon, and from ordinary balloon, the dirigible, a cigar-shaped airship, was evolved. Study of aeronautics and laws of the aerial locomotion of birds and projectiles led to the belief that me mechanism could be evolved by which heavier-than-air machines could be made to travel from place to place and remain in the air by the maintenance of great speed, which would overcome by propulsive force the ordinary law of gravitation. Professor Langley of Washington, who developed much of the theory which others afterward improved upon, was subjected to much derision when he sent a model aeroplane up only to have it bury its nose in the muddy waters of the Potomac. But the Wright brothers, who we examined later, realised the possibility of travelling through the air in a machine that had no gas bag. They saw themselves enjoying this mode of transportation with great faculty. It is said that, the, that one of the brothers would tell the other when their varied experiences did not turn out as they expected. It's all right, brother. I can see myself riding in that machine and it travels easily and steadily. Those Wright brothers knew that they wanted what they wanted and kept their pictures constantly before them. Now transportation through the air is developing rapidly and we feel sure it will in the near future become as ordinary a method of travel as the automobile. In visualising or making a mental picture, you are not endeavouring to change the laws of nature. You are fulfilling them. Your object in visualising is to bring things into regular order, both mentally and physically. When you realise that this method of employing the creative power brings your desires, one after another, into practical material accomplishment, your confidence in the mysteries but unfailing law of attraction, which is the central power station in the very heart of your word, word picture, becomes supreme. Nothing can shake it. 
You never feel that it is necessary to take anything from any, anybody else. You have learned that asking and seeing have, as their correlatives, receiving and finding. You know that all you have to do is start the plastic substance of the universe flowing into the thought moulds your picture desire provides. I love that last sentence. So that's it. It's the reading. So back to the forward. Um, she says that fear should be entirely banished from our consciousness in order to obtain possession of the things we want. So obviously fear is one of the things that stop us from materializing our visualizations. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up, doesn't it? Yeah. And you know, when you think about it, if we, if our mind is what creates the physical reality, then we have no reason to have fear. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, like the only bad things that are there are things that we've created ourselves. So we, we really should have practice the, you know, Napoleon Hill talks so much about being vigilant with our thoughts because they become things. If we were more vigilant with our thoughts, we wouldn't have things materializing that cause fear, such as people who criticize us and, and you know, all of those things that we're mostly scared of. Public speaking is the highest feared thing on the planet. So, and that's all, materialized from our own visualization of people scoffing at us and not taking us seriously and feeling like a fool and making a mistake yeah that's a, that's a really good analogy Nicole how about how we make things up yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, and the things we make up stop us I think Nicole can I say something yeah, yeah of course. I think I think that the, the the sentence of fear should be con entirely banished from our consciousness in order for for you to obtain possession. I think fe what fear does is we don't want to focus too much on fear, but what fear does is it it limits everything. So if you want to create a lot, if you are, want to choose from unlimited possibilities and visualize. And there are no boundaries. There is no form. There is no, there is no limitation. And I think what fear does is it grounds you. It, 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 it boxes you. It, it, it puts limits to things. Isn't that? Yeah, so, I agree. So, so, so you can, what, I, what I feel is that we can use visualization as the extreme of fear because on the other on the one hand you have fear which is everything is box this is the world this is how it looks like etc and then on the other one you have on the other hand you have visualization which is unlimited i mean create whatever you want so 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 i think that's why they tell you first on, on fear because fear will limit your possibilities for visualization when you are fearing something, you cannot go that way. You see, you are not, you want, you don't want to experience or explore that, that, that avenue. One author that I've read talks about um, dealing with fear in this way. But when you um, are fearing something, ask yourself, what is the worst that could happen? And then when you determine what that worst is, you ask yourself, can I live with that? And when you realize you can, then you go, oh, well, it's not that bad then. So, you know, what's the best that can happen? So, so really, it, when you reason with yourself about what really, what are you fearing? What really, how, how bad could it be? And can I live with that? The fear dissipates. Yeah, so powerful, isn't it? Asking yourself yeah. questions and getting clear because I think we're just habitually fearful. Yes, just for fear itself. Yeah. It's not even, it's not even logical. When you put exactly. logic to it, it just goes away. Yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe, maybe the, the, the fear is also um, we we used we used fear to survive. Mm. When you were, when you are in a cage, <laughs> or when there are uh, dinosaurs and all kind of lions or whatever outside the the, the cage, then 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 fear can can be very hand, handy. But if not. If you are living in another world where you can create everything, then you do not need that fear anymore. You see, so fear can be handy in past ages. Yeah, and I think the more we use visualization and start seeing the results of it, the more we'll realize we don't need to live in fear. And I think it comes with practice because it's a really ground, deeply ground in kind of a characteristic that we've grown up with so it's going to be a, uh, one of the harder ones to get rid of and we have to really um i think be vigilant and like cheryl said be constantly rationalizing it to make it go away and make that a habit she says <clears throat> in effort to possess you'll discover and she's talking about uh possessions money, uh, houses, cars. In your effort to possess, you will discover that the thing you most need is to consistently be your best self. How true is that? Who, who's finding that with this journey? Yeah, exactly. I'm really, um, I never, ever thought about it before, becoming my best self. Now it comes to, to mind a lot. Yeah, and isn't that the most rewarding thing? It is, and, and to, to realize that that you can be, what, what you're really supposed to be is your authentic self, that it doesn't matter what the people around you think about you because it, it, it only matters what you feel, right? And, and those people, are, they, they come and go in your life anyways, right? So yeah. Yeah matter and you know um i saw something a really neat thing um yesterday or today that said um don't worry um about people that about people liking you or not liking you because most people are having trouble liking themselves yeah how true is that yeah so so that really frees you up to allow yourself to become your authentic self when you stop worrying about what other people think of you yeah and you know when you when you are your authentic self the things you really want most will be the things that materialize anyway because you're being your yeah. authentic self so yeah i think you need to find that place first and then the rest will come nicole nicole what what can i uh, what i realized about the authentic self it is um it is something like, like this that you can have, if you put your name, like Rooney, Rooney Calmira, that's, you can say, that's me. That's my authentic self. But if you only live that life, your name and, and first name and, and last name, that means that you will also get attached to the fear of that person, to, of that, of that char character of your, in your life. You understand? So, mm -hmm. um, so who is your authentic self? When you are in trouble, when you are in fear, etc., there is always the second part, the, the I, the, the, the authentic self, who looks at this person and says, okay, you have this problem, you have this fear <laughs> right now. There is always that second perspective who looks at, at that person in that situation. And some people are maybe asleep or they are not awakened or whatever. They, they are the true First name and last name. You see, they, they cannot <laughs> think, have another perspective. But most of the people uh, can, can, can get that, that second perspective. So what, I'm, what, I'm, what I've realized is that um, once you take the perspective of, okay, I'm, I have an, another new day and I can live this life of this character, of this person called Nicole Hudson or Rooney Calmera, I, I can enjoy that life of that person to the max today, then 
Every day is a, is a new opportunity to visualize new things, to create new things. So it, it has to do with that, that, that sentence that the, to find your true, true self, you have to basically let go of a lot. You have to let go of, uh, or I have experienced it, that you have to let go of, 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 of a lot of beliefs and a lot of limitations, etc. And you have to just maybe live your life to the fullest every day. Yeah. And if you're wondering which part of you is the true self, it's the self that says, I can do it. I've got a really good idea or um, let's try this. It's not the self that says people will think I'm silly. What if it doesn't work? I don't think I can do that. The true self is the self that believes the best of you. So if you're in doubt which one to listen to, always listen to the one that says you can because that's your true self. Yes. Yes. Um, she's talking to this woman who, oh, sorry, this man who gives him the five, gives her the five dollars, and she says to him, she explained to him that money was the symbol of differentiated substance, and basically she told him that. When you have the need for it, it's constantly there. You just have to, you just have to create the need first. And she's talking about, um, well, I think she goes on to supply and demand later, but he was too scared to put the demand there first. He wanted to get the money to come first and then create the demand for it. He said, you know, what if it comes too late? And she said, it can't because it's eternally present. You've just got to reach out and pluck it. You've got to make a cause for it to be there first and then it will be there. Whereas we work backwards. We feel like we need the money to be there before we take the action. But really, we need to take the action first and then the money will come. And that's, that's a really hard thing to get our head around and that's a real trust in universal law. So a lot of people will you know, a book a holiday or um, book something in advance. So what I've done personally to prove this to myself is booked a very expensive personal development um, four days on the Gold Coast in April next year and I'm taking my kids with me and making a holiday of it. I've booked the room and paid the deposit. I'm paying for the, um, the four days. It's a transformational um, four days. And it's quite a lot of money. So between now and April, I expect to have that much money spare to be able to pay it off. I've just moved house. I've just refurnished a whole house. I'm buying a new car in the next week or two. All of these things I'm doing because I know that if I create the demand, the supply will come for it. And I've just decided to trust that fact that we're learning here. And I'll let you know how that pans out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I'm <laughs> and I think that you've just got to make the decision. Well, for me, anyway, I've just decided that I'm making the decision that what we're learning here is true, and if I apply it, it will happen. It has to, because how could all of these people have all of these stories and and know all of this stuff and be writing books about it and teaching so many people and so many other people having experiences with it if it's not true? You've got to just jump in with both feet and, and do it. Otherwise, it can't work. Yeah, oh, I think I just discovered a, a limiting belief <laughs> while you were talking because I believe, believe that to be true as well, Nicole, that it has to be true because there are so many people that are living examples of it. But to me, my limiting belief is, do I know how to do it yet? Do I understand it? Do I know what to do? So there's my limiting belief that's holding me back. Yeah, and that's what I love about this book. Because she's basically saying to us, if you hold an image in your mind and feel it as true, it will materialize. Simple as that. So well, we just go back to the basics of visualizing when we wake up and before we go to sleep. Yeah. 
and know that it's true. I think that was key. Yeah. Yeah. It's comes down to trust, doesn't it? Yeah. Trust. I, I, have, I, have, a, I have a question. What, what do they mean with the symbol of different, 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 what, what are they saying there? Money is a symbol of different, different, differentiated substance differentiated substance what is that so you know remember uh the science of getting rich yes what is what do they call it there again science of getting rich is it like a frequency my money is a frequency uh, or what do they call it what do they call it all through the book i just can't the word's not coming to me um uh, uh, uh Oh, it says it all the substance. way through. <laughs> it says it all the way through. Substance? Substance. Money. Yeah. So it's, it's, but there's it's, a word before substance. Um, I don't have my book. Is. I lent it to somebody. We should know um, because we've studied it. Um, it's, it's, it's the substance that holds everything together and it's just a tool. So yeah. it, things can come to you through through lots of different ways. They materialize in lots of different ways and money is just one of them. It's just a matter that we hold together with our mind to get something that we desire. Mm -hmm. And why is it differ differentiated? So it is, it is focused, it is, it's like substance, but it's now, yes. it's substance in a, in a way. It's a, it's a way, it's a, it's a form of substance. Money is a form of stop, substance, isn't it? Yeah, so there's infinite all, possibilities. Everything is a form of substance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so don't look money as something special. They are saying we are substance. We know that we are substance. We are thinking soft stuff. So money, money is just thinking stuff in a, in, a, in, a, in a form. Is that what, what they are saying here? Yeah. So if you, need, if you specifically need the money to, to, to fulfill something, that's how it, it will materialize. So then that, that's why you need to, to, to specify it. And that's why you, maybe you need to vi visualize it, isn't it? Yeah. And, and sometimes it can be limiting to do that, I believe, because it may not be through money that it comes. Like, uh, I think there's another story coming up, but if you only focus on the money, you could be limiting other avenues that it could come to you. What, what's best to do? It, is it best to, to focus and visualize on what you want and then the money will come, isn't it? By, by, by focusing on what you want, you create the demand and then the supply has to come. Money has to yeah. come to fill it in. That, that's basically yeah. it. And I think what Nicole is saying is that it may not come through uh, for money. Uh, for money. Like, for instance, Rooney, you want a car. Yeah. You want your, your yellow Porsche. Well, maybe it's not going to come by you getting the money. Maybe you're going to just, somebody's going to, all of a sudden, that car is going to come to you, not yeah. by you getting the money first to go buy it. Yeah. It'll come a different way. Yeah. So, really, so I've you, been watching you over the past years, inspiring so many people to create the lives they want. I have this yellow Porsche, it's yours. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so don't, don't, don't focus on the money is, is, is what they're saying here also. Or not focus on the a substance on, on what you want. Because our mind is what creates physical, yeah. physical matter. So it doesn't need to be money. Yeah. I understand. Thanks. Yeah. And we all like to have money sitting in the bank, but our money is actually a flow. It's not flowing. It's not working for you can't just be sitting in the bank the more money you make the more money is going to be going out uh, there's so much in this I'm just looking through because there's so many points I don't want to miss um, so she says in that same part there that this substance fills all space that it was present for him at that very moment and it would manifest him as the money um, was required. So it won't manifest until it's required. So you've got to create the need. And also it's constantly there. There's a, there's a, 
an abundant supply of whatever we could possibly think we need constantly. We just have to create the need for it to turn up. And the same with our skills and our tools. If we don't use the skills and tools that we have now, other ones won't be added to us as we go. So we've got to completely fill our space, like it says in Science of Getting Rich, and then we can expand. Or was that thinking we're rich? One of those two. So it's kind of a back to front way that, that we're used to thinking. We think that we have to earn the money first and then we can go and spend it or we have to um, wait for something to come before we can use it but we actually have to create the need for the thing and then it will come. So yeah, because I, I did notice there when she referred to that law in one, I can't remember what exact paragraph it was in, but she referred to it as the law of demand and supply, not of supply and demand. Exactly. As we well know it, right? And I thought that was strange, but it didn't hit me now until just now, Nicole, when you put it that way. And so she did that on purpose for that reason. Yeah, so there's an unlimited abundance, so we need to demand it to be able to receive it. It's always there, it's ever present. Yeah, yep, it's completely the other way around. It is, yeah. And that's where the trust comes in. You've got to put yourself in a position where um, you're just trusting the universe to bring it to you because you know it's there. And, that, and that's a big leap to take. Is it ever, hey? Yeah. And again, that's just a different way of telling us to have faith. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, because she says to him, it could never come too late, because he says, what if it comes too late? It could never come too late because it's eternally present. But if we don't ask yeah. for it, we won't receive it. Yeah. Huh. So there you go. There's another point where things will come to you when they should. Yeah. Right? It might not be when you think it's, it's right. It'll be when the universe knows it's right. Yeah. And as long as we're working in harmony with the universe, because what's the, the purpose of the universe is expansion and focus and creation through us. If we're doing that, then there's no reason why it shouldn't occur because that's our purpose for being here. So if you're developing yourself or helping other people, whatever it is, wanting to enjoy life more fully, of course the universe is going to give you what you need to do that because that's the whole purpose of you being here and you're fulfilling that purpose and, and it will come to serve that purpose. Yeah, I really like that point, Nicole, the way you put it. So, you know, we don't, me you just kind of said and something that I heard the other day that our purpose may not be some grandiose you know creating some new thing to, you know to better the world new gadget or whatever our purpose can just be to help others experience life more fully yeah exactly and you know some of the people who are doing their job I call it our job because that's what we put here to do is to help the universe focus through individuals to expand. They're doing their, some of the people who are doing the best job are those who are not doing much at all besides just completely enjoying life. You know, they may, yeah. they may only work a couple of months a year to get enough money to go on their next adventure. And I think that those are some of the people who are just living their complete desire and inflow constantly and creating such expansion um, for the universe and we look at them and, and may have opinions about them that they're not contributing to society blah 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 what it's society materialism it's not what the universe yeah. is really wanting I think yeah it's now, joy and love and adventure we just make things way more complicated and hard and difficult than we have to sometimes I think yeah it's just our opinion that we we have to uh, build an empire <laughs> we don't 
Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That, that takes the pressure off, hey, Nicole? Oh, yeah. Big time. Big time. And I think, you know, one of the things that is our job as well is being the best person that we can be. Being our authentic self and being tuning into our true self. I think that's the bigger part of it. Because if we're not using the faculties and the intelligence that we were given, then we're probably letting the team down. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Letting the team down. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And, you know, I, I kind of have an example of that, I think. That um, I, I have a coffee date this afternoon. It's one of those dating sites. I thought I had taken my my profile down because I hadn't heard anything for so long. I thought, oh, I must have taken my profile off. Well, all of a sudden, I'm getting all these guys sending me messages. And so I'm going to coffee with this fellow today. And I was thinking, you know, I'm such a different person than the last time I ever went on a date. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, I'm just going with a whole different... Like, there's no agenda, but they're a whole different attitude of, you know, I'm just going to meet somebody, and it's so exciting to, it's, it's so nice to meet more and more people, because, you know, we're, we're all connected, and the more connected you can get, the better we will be, yeah. and, but, you know, that wouldn't have been how I would have looked at it. Like a couple of years ago, I would have thought, oh, gee, I better be on my best behavior, I better be smart, and and you know trying to impress this person well you know what that wouldn't have been the real me so why would they be impressed yeah yeah that's awesome it doesn't it feel good <laughs> it does. It great does. <laughs> great <laughs> so that's what you bring to the world right now yeah, yeah. pretty cool <laughs> hey yeah <laughs> Yeah, so I'm feeling like way less pressure to, you know, like you said, like build an empire or whatever. Yes, I still want to be financially abundant and be able to travel and have things and help people, but I don't, all I have to do is worry about helping the universe expand and it will help me do that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And when you see it in your mind, that's your creative power at work. That's how that's how spirit works through our what does she call it? I think we're coming to it in the first chapter. A center of Oh divine a center of divine intelligence or creativity or divine yeah. center of divine intelligence. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah. So that's what each individual on this planet is, just a center for the focus of spirit to experience life more fully from the so many different perspectives at once. Yeah. And that's why it's okay to have our own perspective because that's what we're meant to do. <laughs> yes, exactly. And yeah, how did we ever come to, to the state of, Fearing to share our perspective because someone may not agree with us or ridicule us. How did we ever get to that, hey? Yeah, really, you know, where it's all about fitting in and, and staying yeah. within the mold and, and then someone branches out and does something different and they get ridiculed. <clears throat> yeah, until they get successful and then they're told how lucky they are. Yeah. Yeah, it's just we have a really screwed up mentality. Do we ever, hey? <laughs> uh, she talks it, that this last paragraph on on the first page of the forward. She calls visualization the law of visualization. Yeah, right. Yeah. And she also talks about not um, not using strain. Or tension so I think that comes back to trusting as well I've heard it so many times this week and it must be my learning for the week when you're visualizing and you've got that 
in place what you're what you're intending on manifesting then let it come naturally don't be constantly working on it as well as it coming to you relax on it a bit just know that you've done your part by thought action and putting it into a visualization and allow the universe to bring you the inspiration and the people and the circumstances and then act on so it's taking a step back a bit and just relaxing into it instead of um, feeling the stress of having to make it happen yourself. I think there's a yeah. huge trust element here. Yeah, that, I don't know. I still find sometimes I think conflicting ideas about that because, you, you know, relax into it, ask once, just trust that it's going to come. But yet when we are studying Napoleon Hill, you're supposed to be, you know, repeating it to yourself like two times a day and you're supposed to be, you know, putting putting a, a plan of action together and saying how you're going to do, you know, you're going to have a certain amount of money by a certain specific time by offering your, the very best of your service and which what that service is and I'm going, okay that's so specific that puts so much pressure on you to know what how it is that you're going to achieve this goal whereas when we read something like this or listen to abraham it's told it seems to me it's totally awesome uh, opposite well, what do you think yeah i think that because think and grow rich is more focused on finances and actually building an empire that there is a lot more concentration of effort required and whereas Abraham is more talking about just the expansion of the universe and joy mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and the repetition um, part of it is not the creative part it's the reprogramming of the subconscious mind so yeah, okay. the subconscious mind that does the work for you when you're not focusing your attention okay so are you are you saying that okay yeah I, I, I got there's got to be a way to put this in perspective yep okay so let's do you want to try that <laughs> yeah yeah go go see talk it out <laughs> okay okay so so when when you're asking asking it and it and you shall receive right so yep. so that's where you're they're saying ask once you don't have to ask every single day five times a day right you just have to ask once and trust that it will come to you so that is i don't know what what that is that's that's the law of attraction yes yeah, so, yeah abraham talks about how your higher self knows what you want and even the Bible and all most religious teachings say that God knows what you want before you even ask. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Um, I think that that's not really working for me. <laughs> just to discuss, just to word it out and discuss it. I think that you need to spend a little bit more time visualizing it morning and night and feeling it there like getting yourself on the frequency of it for it to materialize because she does that's, say I don't know that's probably it nicole is getting yourself on the same frequency because she said where is it she says it will either come physically or spiritually right um, okay and abraham talks a lot about being happy with uh, not having it so spiritually and vibrationally it's there but for it to really manifest physically, I th I'm thinking along the lines of, and I might be making it too hard for myself, you know? Yeah. See, and I think that's what I'm doing too. And according to this book as well, it's, you need to visualize it, picture it because your mind is the center for creation. So you're applying and, molding the clay of substance in your mind which causes the physical reality of it so there must be some time spent visualizing it 
Hey, Nicole, sorry, I just got to take this call from my son, so I'll just be gone for a minute or two if you okay. guys yep. talk. No worries. I think uh, Rooney's off for a couple of minutes as well. Yeah, I'm like... back. Great climbing. <laughs> Were you talking about, sorry, I'm, obviously I missed a few bits. Yeah. Were you, uh, we were talking were you... about how, um, we were just talking out, because Cheryl was saying, you know, some, like Abraham says, just ask once and that's it, ask and you'll receive. Napoleon yeah. Hill is the other extreme persistence and read it morning and night and know what you're going to give in return and go the extra mile and when we're talking about how he is really more yeah. focused on finance and building an empire Abraham is more focused on experiencing joy and um, that type of expansion of the universe just being happy yeah. with the experience of it and we were just talking through you know what is for what we want to do be our best selves and just be financially independent and happy where is the, the what do we need to be doing personally i think to be honest i, I think there's uh, people miss the point in all of this because when you when you look at abraham what, what they talk about and the reason you don't need to do it again it's all to do with the law of attraction right now napoleon hill the book itself is law of attraction at the end of the day that's what he's trying to get you to do is the, is the complete belief that whatever you want you're going to get and understanding causation and effect but what happens along the way uh, when people look at Abraham and they listen to what Abraham talks about and what Esther Hicks talks about, it's, it, the concept is actually the same, but it's all down to belief. That, that's all it is. People that listen to Abraham, have that, like, most of them will already have some form of a belief, which is why they've been attracted to it. Whereas when it comes to Napoleon, he's... I mean, and, and this is why I keep saying people have to, you, you've got to have a look at when you wrote the book, because people's belief, everything that they believed in, because they believed in their government, they believed in, in their financial structure, they believed in everything, everything disappeared. It all fell through. So their belief disappeared. And what he, what he's trying, what he was doing is rebuilding it. The only thing is, is that ever since then, Societies maintain that thought process, that, that disbelief. And we haven't built up that belief yet. Now, the, the majority, whereas you've got people that are getting attracted towards aspects and the teachings of Abraham, they've already touched the law of attraction. And if you listen to a lot of them, they're saying the law of attraction works for me. So they don't really need to visualize it. This is the, the let go and let God principle. Uh, with Abraham, whereas with Napoleon, he's building people up, he's building your belief up and your faith that whatever you ask for, you're going to get, which is why he goes through the process. You know, the, the repeated saying in the morning and in the evening is to install it in your subconscious. So for that one principle, and then eventually all the rest of them, you're going to become an unconscious competent. And what Esther and Jerry Hicks say through the teachings of Abraham, or Jerry used to say, well, probably still does, is the fact that you already have that in you. You already have that instilled within you. So just let go and let go. So you put what you want on the piece of paper and you can read it in the morning and at night, but at the same time, you release it. Don't, the idea is you don't need to keep thinking about it because you create resistance. And that's why Napoleon Hill says, you know, you think about it in the morning, you think about it at night. And then the other thing comes in, which is, you know, that thing about the incessant prayer, which in reality, what it, it, well, what it means with this stuff is you maintain that image of yourself. But that goes back to belief. So, you know, it's like, uh, 
uh, when you were talking about having the physiology of of an expert speaking, sitting, walking, feeling, mm-hmm. but is your incessant your incessant prayer is when you actually see yourself and you you already feel it. That's your incessant prayer. And you're already there. The other way is you you constantly think it and it's constantly going through your mind until you become an unconscious competent in that in that part and you're actually that person and that's when you're really letting go and letting go Mm. so i guess that's where the visualization comes in because then that becomes part of what you are and a lot of people talk about getting the visualization really detailed yeah and this paragraph here i'll read it to you again it it kind of sheds a bit of light on it as well If through the suggestions here given, only one is brought to realise that the mind is a centre through which, uh, sorry, through and in which all power there is, is in operation, simply waiting to be given direction in one and, sorry, in the one and only way through which it can take specific action. And this means reaction in concrete or physical form. Then the mission to which this book has been fulfilled, if we get that point. So our minds, when we see what we want, is spirit working through us to create matter. Through the suggestions here given, anyone is probably realised. You've noticed that the sentence before, the last, um, the last sentence in the previous paragraph, she talks about is the law of attraction, the law of cause and effect. And then she goes on to that one, which yeah. is through the and she given us what the others are the ones Yeah, and waiting to be given direction. Yeah. Yeah. It, what what she's saying, I mean, to be honest, the whole what she's saying there is like you said, it's it's our sudden realization. It's putting the focus on that single subject that you truly want and maintaining that subject. It's what drives you. It, it solidifies that, that idea, which again goes back to what Napoleon was saying, which is why you repeat it to yourself in the morning and in the evening, and why you see it, you feel it, and you believe it. Because that, that's what it's going to do. Now, we've got to remember that for, for Genevieve, is when she was studying with Troward, is that her belief, I mean, eventually you'll realize that through the book, her faith and belief in this subject is, it's immovable. She knows that this stuff that this is just the way it is. That this I is think the that's law. the key, isn't it? It's just yes. trusting it. Exactly. This is why you won't find anything about it in the book. She doesn't. Each, well, that's not true. It's just a given. Yeah. For her, it's just a given. Mm-hmm. She explains a little bit later on, but for her, it's a given. Yeah. And then the, the following um, paragraph says, try to remember that the picture you think, feel and see, so she says feel, and yeah. see, is reflected into the universal mind and by the natural law of reciprocal action must return to you in either spiritual or physical form. Knowledge of this law of reciprocal action between the individual and the universal minds open you to free access to all you may wish to possess or be. So yeah. everything we could possibly want to be or do or have is available to us through our focus yeah. attention. Yeah. See, the, the thing is, is um, everything that you, everything that could ever be is or will be already exists. Everything already exists. It's always been there, always, it still is there, and it always will be there. Yeah. And it, it goes back to the thing about abundance. You know, you take a little bit and there's still, it's still abundant because it never it never ceases to exist it's always there and by applying all of the principles the visualization what you're doing is that you're solidifying that idea within yourself 
for a start because then you begin to believe that that is so. And once you believe that, that visualization, that what you're seeing yourself as, to be, to do, and to have, then you will move towards it. It's inevitable. It must happen. And at the same time, and I think this is where a lot of people get confused because they say, well, uh, you know, you tell me about the law of attraction, that it does everything, and then you tell me that we do everything. Well, actually, it's a combination of the two. Yeah. Because we get a me- we send the message out there and we say, this is what we want. And what the cause of law of inf- and defect does is that it, the universal intelligence, the infinite intelligence, begins to reshape everything to move it towards you. So there's certain people that you're gonna need to speak to. There's certain people that you're gonna need to come across. And what it will do is that it will create a circumstances for you. But what it will also do is that it will send you a message every now and then, and it'll say to you that- Take this action. (laughs) Exactly, yeah, you're gonna get, you know, you're gonna get that feeling that's gonna say to you, go into that shop, Go in that direction, pick that up, do this. And you're going to say, that doesn't make any sense. Why am I going to go and buy that plum pot? I don't even need a plum pot. And you're going to go and buy it. You've got to go and buy it. Because that may not have a direct effect effect right there and then. And let's suppose you buy the plum pot, you start walking down the street, you trip, and you break it. Guy is is standing there and says, you all right? You say, yeah, it doesn't matter. It'll, It'll get sorted. And then you might mention... You'll get this thing in your head that say, mention this word. And you'll men- you, because you now know what you've got to do, you'll mention the word. And the guy might turn around and be the person that you need to talk to. Yeah. You, you know, so there's no such thing as circumstance. And when we begin to understand the fact that there is no such thing as circumstance, sorry, no circumstance, um, coincidence, that there is no such word as coincidence, everything is synchronicity. Everything that is meant to happen does happen then we begin to understand that it's just the way it's meant to be. Um, you will act with faith on everything that you do. We, when you get that instinct, when you get that word, in you, that's it, thank you. When you get that inspiration, uh, that, that sixth sense talking to you, then you're going to do it. You, be, you begin to realize that that's the way it is and you do it. Yeah, I really like the way she talks about um, our relationship with the originating spirit, which is that of a son, and that the parent mind acts and reacts. And I know as a parent that you want your child to be the happiest child on the planet and you want them to have everything and be everything. I understand that strong feeling. And it says, uh, whatever you think and feel yourself to be, the creative spirit spirit of life is bound to faithfully reproduce in a corresponding reaction that's right yeah okay, where was that nicole i needed that right now <laughs> that is the second last um, paragraph in the um forward in the forward okay you, you know I, let me, i'll reflect this a little bit on the religious side because for i don't know if you've realized yet but genevieve is quite religious which is why she talks this way in in one of the in the uh, oh, come on, you you know this better than me, Nick. Um, um, the Sermon on the Mount, where he talks and he says that if a child asks for bread, the father is not going to give him a stone, mm. which means that the father is going to give him bread. In the same sense, if you ask for something, you are going to get it. That, that's just the universal law. But a lot of people misunderstand this, and this is where they go wrong. Where they turn around, they say, oh, but it doesn't work for me. And you say, well, what do you mean it doesn't work? They say, well, I always get what I don't want. And you say to them, listen to your words. I always get what I don't want. I always, which means that that is what you believe. You believe that you're always going to get what you don't want, rather than believing that you are going to get what you want, which is why a lot of people say, oh, the law of attraction doesn't work. But it does. That's mm. the whole point. You, well, you ask someone, what, what do you want in a mate? Well, I don't want someone yeah. who goes to the pub every day. I don't want someone who swears. I don't want someone who spends all the money. I don't want someone who doesn't help with the housework. Yeah. Well, you've just and worked what, out what you don't want. Is that what you've been getting? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Funny, right? Funny, though. So 
Exactly, like that's that's the whole point. And this is why people think that the law of attraction doesn't work because they say, well, that's what I asked for. Yeah, but what did you really ask for? Mm. They say, well, what have you been focusing your attention on? Yeah, what is it that really in your subconscious? Is that what, what's embedded in your subconscious for you to get? And this is where what we were talking about previously about, you know, do you for say something and forget about it or do you repeat it? Well, if you say something once and let it go, then you've got to be in a position where you know that that is truth. So in your subconscious, you've got to know that is truth. That's when you yeah. can let it go. Yeah. And if you're not sure and you need to build it, then you've got to do what Napoleon Hill says. Yeah. So a lot of people think that everything is for one person. It's not. Take, you've got to look at yourself as an individual and say, right, what's going to work for me? Is the teachings of Abraham applicable for me? Because I believe that strongly that when I say something, that's the way it's going to be. Or do I need that reaffirmation to build up my belief and to build some, push something into my subconscious the way that Napoleon Hill does with auto-suggestion. And, you know, you, you've got to find the balance for yourself with one or the other or something in between. You know, and, and I think this is where a lot of people get confused. It's the it's that thing where, oh, is that one right or is that one right? Well, it's perception. It's like if you write number six on the floor and someone comes towards you, they're going to see a number nine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's the old thing about the holding up the book on one side of the book, there's nothing on the other one, is a title, which is uh, something written on the book. And you've got to look at it up in that sense. You've, your perception has got to go on both sides. They're both right. That's it. They're both right. But it depends on which one you actually feel more comfortable with. If you say to yourself, I'm going to do this, but you don't believe it, well, go to Napoleon Hill. It tells you what to do. But if you say something and you believe it, go to Abraham Hicks and then let, it, let go and let go. As a matter of fact, why don't you, you know, you can go through one of the processes. I think it's number two is two. Two, number two, which is for four, it's one of them up with the box. What it is is box. You get a box or whatever you want, or whatever goes in the box, just is. But that's not, that's Abraham Hicks. It's belief that whatever you put in that box, it just is. You know, it's it's our concept. Yeah, <clears throat> I like in at the start of chapter one here. She explains a good reason for visualizing. She says the exercise of vis the visualizing faculty keeps your mind in order and attracts to you the things you need to make life more enjoyable in an order orderly way. And then she says if you train yourself in the practice of deliberate picturing uh, your desire and carefully examining your picture, you will soon find that your thoughts and desires proceed in a more orderly procession than ever before. And I think that's got to do with training your subconscious mind and becoming that that you wish to be, do and have. Exactly, yeah. Something you know, else that occurred to me in that was that, that um, you will be inspired to take the right action. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Because, Sorry, yeah. I was just going to say, and there's underlined so much here, but in about three more paragraphs down, this small little two-line paragraph talks about that. She says, the conscious use of this power attracts to you multiplied resources, intensifies your wisdom, and enables you to make use of advantages which you formerly failed to recognise. Those advantages that we formerly failed to recognise are the inspirations to go into the shop, to talk to that person, to ring someone, to take some kind of action that we don't recognise before because we, we may have got the urge to do something but we didn't act on it because we didn't realise where it was coming from or what it was for. But now we understand that if I get an urge to do something, I'm right on it because I know the source of it. And we, we would have really failed to recognize that previous to this. Yeah. And we are given multiple resources. And if one doesn't pan out, another one gets set up for us. Yep. So the, this is where the concept of, you know, opportunities don't come off in your life and if you miss it, you know, that's the, that and that's it. That's a lot of rubbish. Opportunities come consistently all the time. 
but they only come when you realize it. You've got to be able to receive the idea. You've got to be, you see this re receiving thing, what complicates you, you, your mind's got to be open. By visualizing what you want and building a definite picture of what you want, you begin to send the image, you, you send the image, you solidify the image in the substance around you, which is life. The, the substance of life solidifies, it is plastic. And it does what you want, it is plastic, it is intelligent. And it creates what you put into it. Once you put that idea into it, it it's already formed. As a matter of fact, the minute you've thought it, it's already used. The originating idea is the idea itself. You already possess it because you've created the idea. And therefore, because you possess it, it's already used. It can't be any other way because you can't think in the future. You can only think in the, in the present. And by you incessant use of visualization, you're not only solidifying what you want, you're improving your ability to imagine, your imagination skills, your belief and your faith in what you're imagining is solidified. And because all, all of that becomes one, everything that should happen, happens. And because you are now focused on one single subject, rather than trying to do something to the left, something to the right, I want to do this or I want to do that, are you saying, no, this is what I want to do? It's so focused. But it has to happen. I mean, we could go into the rest of it. Nick will tell you, you know, with NLP and the way that the mind works and how it's all different. But that only explains part of it. And that's what I've come to understand. One, one part of it is that your mind begins to focus on, on the one subject that you want. So, for example, if I said to you, now, feel your right foot. All of a sudden, you're feeling your right foot. What about your left hand? you wouldn't have thought of feeling either of them until I've said it. And that's what you're doing with your mind. You begin to focus on a given subject and it drives it forward. By constant visualization, you are solidifying that picture. But at the same time, you're sending the message outside so everything can come around to you. And that is the biggest magic of it. That's the biggest miracle. Yeah, I, I, yeah I agree. I, I kind of, in my mind, I see it as... The energy coming in, the creative energy yep. coming in, and my mind yep. puts it into a picture. <laughs> it, yep. it it molds it into what I want the physical whatever to be. It's all up to me. I focus the energy into whatever I choose it to be, and every individual focuses the energy into what they choose it to be. Exactly. Yep. So we, we're, we're kind of like the, the little factory of um, turning energy into matter. Yeah. Yeah. We are, we are the creators of our own life. See, this, this is what I've, I suddenly realized that everything that we do, once we visualize it, we've already created it. Yeah. It, there's no, it's not so maybes. That's just the way it is. Now the trust of that is so that's what takes sometimes longer. For me it's taking longer. Yeah. Yeah. And once you've got that down and you hold it, you begin to become that unconscious competent and you no longer need to think anything more. Just this is what I want to do and everything will come to it. Yeah, and, and you know what I'm finding that's coming down to is courage. Just having the courage yeah. to just jump in and do it. You know, I've spent so long trying to build my knowledge and trying to increase my um, confidence and, you know, doing all of these things. But unless you take the courage and jump in and, and try it out, give it 100% faith, exactly. you can't experience yeah. it. No, you've got, you've got to jump in, you know, it's that yeah. leap of faith. Yeah. And then you've got to ask yourself, right, well, what's leap of faith? I mean, for me, for example, I'm, work, I'm working somewhere else and I, you know, we know what I want to do. So it's my leap of faith, quitting that job and then saying I'm going to put all my focus on it. But at the same time, is that a little bit silly because I've got things, you know, that job is providing me with 
the financial support that I need to get what I need. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So there is, there is a balance to it. There is a balance. Everything comes at the right time. And you'll, you'll know when the right time is. When something says to you, right, now, now it's time to take that leap of faith, you'll see it. You'll feel it. You're going to get that intuitive push because through your visualization, you've sent everything out, and then eventually that answer is going to come back and it's going to say, now is the time. And that is the time when you've got to take the leap. But if you miss it that time, it's fine because it's going to come back again. And this is where... A lot of people think that it doesn't, that you've only got to get one chance. You don't. But if you don't take it the first time, it's going to take longer the second time. So it's all about how quickly do you really want this. That's what it's about as well. Yeah. She calls visualization the great secret of success. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Yeah. And she simplifies it, you know, she just says it places things in their natural order. Then the, the creative energy knows exactly what to create. <laughs> we decide what it creates through our mind, the power of our mind, our focus and our visualization of it. All true, all true. Yeah. I'm a, sorry, you guys. I'm just a little bit not focused today. Sorry. <laughs> just having some money issues with that son, so. Uh. I have a question. There is a paragraph, uh, all, all that is necessary in order that you may use this key and make your life exactly what you wish it to be is a careful inquiry into the unseen causes. That, can you explain that one? That's what we're doing right now. Yeah. Learning it's and understanding and then we can trust. So a careful inquiry into the unseen causes which stand back every student. Okay, so we are we are we are inquiring about the unseen causes, etc. Um, for what we are seeing. Yeah, because she talks in here about not going against natural law, but working with the law to um, be able to create the things that we want in our life. So once yeah. we understand how it works and. Um, and how it works is that creative force works through us to create physical world. Yeah. Then, then, and we know how to use that. We know how to focus that. Then we can do it. Yeah. If we don't understand it, we can't apply it very well. I think she's talking about the law of cause and effect as well, Nick. Yes. You know, yeah. Because when she's... The first thing that comes to my mind when she says a careful inquiry into the unseen causes which stand back of every external on this condition is the cause and effect is you've got to visualize what you want and not what you don't want. This is exactly what we're talking about. And this is what I think this is what she's talking about when I, I didn't even highlight this bit. Um, all that's necessary in order that you may use this key and make your life exactly what you wish it to be. So it, she, part of the key is already in that sentence and make your life exactly what you wish it to be. Mm. It's a careful inquiry into the unseen causes. The unseen causes, as we know, is the law of cause and effect, what we put in our mind and visualizing correctly. And when I say visualizing correctly, it's visualizing what we want, which stand back of every external and visible condition. In other words, what we put in our minds is what we reflect in our uh, in our lives, he, he goes back to James Allen's last sentence, which is, uh, oh, good grief. I can't remember now, sorry. Um, there we go. He thinks in secret and it comes to pass and barm with his, but his looking glass, mm. which is basically, you know, what you think about is what you put out. And I think what she's on about is when you begin to realize that 
and you start thinking correctly and you start thinking about what you want rather than what you don't want. That's when you begin your external and your visible um, circumstances change because when you change inside, and we all know this, when you change inside, the outside has to change. That, that's a law, that's the law of nature. Once you change internally, it has to change externally to reflect it. And that can go both ways. And this is what everybody needs to remember is that, you know, it, it's not just for the good, it can actually go for the bad. And this is why, you know, you've got to have that control in visualization. That's why she says, you know, you focus on it. And the more you visualize, the better you get at it, is so that you can begin to visualize exactly what you want and you push that forward. Yeah, I like the way she uses the word conception <clears throat> in that paragraph because we cause the conception of physical things with our minds. And she, and she put, puts it pretty plain about how the, the capability to fly was uh, an airplane was always there. It's just that in year one, nobody understood that that capability was there. But things are, have, have always been and always will be, like Bob says, I think, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we just have to learn. Well, that comes back to careful inquiring of the unseen causes, doesn't it? We, it, it's always there. There's lots of universal laws that are working and once we learn about them and how to use them, then we can harness them and do more stuff with them. And the airplane's a really good example of that. I, I got a, a, a question. I got a feeling like they, all these authors, they know exactly how it works and then they they, 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 they shine, they put their, their lights of, for, of course on it, but it is the same thing all, all the time, isn't it? It's the same, the, the same thing, but they all know it and they all <laughs> experience it. That's the key, isn't it? They experience it. So what we have to do is cause ourselves to experience it. Yeah. By and they, 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 they they don't think about it, about the possibility that it's not true. They, they, it is, it is, they, they believe it. They run the burn, all, all think on, and, and, and grow rich, Napoleon Hill. They all strongly believe in it. Rooney, you, you gotta, buddy, you gotta remember that they would have started at ground zero as well. They would have started at a point where they, they might have had an idea that they, they speak stuff in this kind of stuff, but not everybody is, is or grow, sorry, not everybody grows up with this belief in still that that's just the way it is. And a lot of us like, like us in this group, the reason we came together is because we want to, we want that instillment, we want to be unconscious competence. And that is what we're trying to reach. And every, every other author, when they've written about this, the majority of them have, well, the majority of them have either had to go through this process or they knew this process from, from when they were small because that's the environment they grew up in. So for example, you know, if you've got uh, any children and they're around you when you're reading this or they're listening to it, they will grow up with this competency and they'll be fine. And yes, all of this stuff is all the same. It's all absolutely the same. When people talk about this, it's always the same. There's no difference. It's, it's just that the way that people put it across is a little bit differently. We, you, you know, you use different methods like uh, NLP to get people, if there's any, any issues, that they can be drawn out quickly and solidified. And then you've got, uh, I don't know, I mean, I mean, there's so many different methods. On every single method that is ever used, it does exactly the same thing. It, it's to build you into this 
person that knows that once you put an idea in your mind, it just has to happen. It's, but you've got to put that feeling and that belief behind it. But when you get to that point, you don't need to think about, oh, I've got to put faith and I've got to put feeling behind it and I've got to do this. You just, it's automatic. You know, it's like blinking, you breathe, it's like breathing. You know you've got to breathe. But you don't actually think, right, I've got to expand my lungs, I've got to push my diaphragm, you know, you don't start going through it. It's like when you start working when you work like you learn. And all of this stuff is about learning and teaching your mind and getting into your subconscious that this is just the way it is. I just want to, I just uh, want to say that you know, the world, when you, when you uh, have your education, everything, university, whatever education you can have, they do not teach you um, the thing about the, un, the, 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 the what, what, she, what she told about the, the, the classes, the un, unseen classes. The world yeah. tells you more about the seen results. That's right. <laughs> the, seen yeah. re, the seen results. And then what, what I like about these, uh, these uh, meetings, and it is not a reading only, but it is about um, reprogramming your mind and to yep. understand how the world works. Not only the world, but the universe works. Yep. So that's, that's one of my main benefits I've been uh, having uh, of, of this. Uh, you see the results, you see the results, but now you understand what the unseen processes are and how it yeah. works. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, that's so, so now I think the learning from today is to believe and jump. Yeah. We've been doing this long enough to, to know what the unseen causes are capable of and what we're capable of. Now we need to believe and jump. No, it's, it's really strange you saying that because that's exactly what I was thinking on the, uh, on the drive back from work. It was a sudden realization that I thought to myself, and, and I don't know where it came from, but it was that, you know, we try, um, it's like with me now, trying to get into the coaching. I haven't done any coaching courses, so I've gone on the internet, I've, I've found a couple of free stuff and the pay 15 euros for something. I thought to myself, you know something, this is like me resisting the obvious. I know where I want to go. I know what I want to do. It has to happen. Yes, when things come across, you've got to act on them, like you said, Nick. You've got to jump on it, and you've got to take it. So it's okay to read, and it's okay to think about things, and it's okay to study them. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's a balance. You know, what is the definition of family for faith? When is it that, you know, our visualization, when we build it up to that point where we know exactly what, where we are, what we are and where we're going, at what point does it begin to alter from having to act to learn? So for me, understanding how to coach because I don't have any coaching skills. And I thought, I was thinking to myself, and it suddenly came to me, it'll come. Simple as that, it will come, because that is what I've got. This is, in my mind, where I want to get to. And there's questions that I have, which is, you know, how do I do this and how do I do that? And the minute I said that, I said to myself, the how is not done to me. And I suddenly realized, like that. Yeah. Because and, I've been trying to find the how. And Nicole, Nicole, if, if we want to if if believe and jump and we want to be held accountable, we know where to find you, isn't it? Yeah, and that's why I love these calls so much because we can get together and talk about it because we're not reading at home by ourselves and continually reading and reading and learning and learning and not having the confidence or the courage to actually act. We can come here and say to each other, okay, well, we know it now, so come on, <laughs> let's jump. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So next week, next week we will come back and uh, and uh, at least read another chapter. But uh, we will we we, we we somewhere we need to be able to say what we jumped uh, yeah. in. What did we jump in? Was it <laughs> good or not? <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>
I'm jumping into a beautiful new version of my dream. I'm already living my dream, but I'm I'm already creating also in the now another version, a better version, an awesome version, and I'm jumping into that. I'm stepping in actually. Yeah. I open the door and I'm already there. Yeah, I'm just I'm just allowing myself to float in the substance. Yeah, great. Yeah. I just love this last sentence. I have to jump off the call in a minute because I have it's school holidays and I have children arriving early. But this last sentence here, you know that all you have to do is to start the plastic substance of the universe flowing into the thought molds your picture desire provides. I love that. I'm going to put that on my wall. I had a yeah, her language, her language that. is so flowery that something you really have to concentrate, don't you? <laughs> yeah. A couple of years ago, I, I had this kind of a half dream visualization of like it was like putty and being molded or plasticine being molded in my mind. And I knew that that was my creative force that, that I had the power to mold things into whatever I wanted. And that was right at the start or not right about halfway through before my understanding really kicked in. But I just had that knowing that I have the power to mold energy into whatever I want it to be. And that's why I love that sentence so much because it just brings that picture back into my mind. And I just have that knowing and now I can just jump in and, and take the action and, and wait for it all to solidify. There and, is. Eager, and be an eager anticipation of the outcome, right? Yeah, that's the best part. I think that's the yeah. most enjoyable part. Yeah, I like, wonder how this is going to turn out, right? Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait to see how this pans out because it's not always yeah. how you expect. And that's the fun yeah. part. Exactly. There is a, Nicole, there is a party. It is a party or it is a, a substance. And then it's like a, an ocean. And then when you are in, you are it basically yeah everything you think of your consciousness and everything you think of the party and the substance turns right away so if you say i want a dream villa in the caribbean but it's there i want a horse but it's there i want a whatever a a, a, a relation happy relationship and i see this man or a woman but it's there and then i realized that I was that substance. So I have experienced this, uh, what they are telling us, I have experienced this in a dream. I don't know if it's a, it was a dream and it is a reality, but I, I have experienced it, that it's like that. You are, you, are, you, are, you are the one looking at the party and being the party, and then you are just saying, what do I want? And it, whatever your wish, your wish is its command and whatever it happens it's doing and that i brought that back because i i i want to uh experience that and seeing life like that but only sometimes when you interact with people you get a feeling that that is not what it is working but in essence it's like that and the only one the only person holding that to happen are not standing between that reality and, 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 and that dream is you. Yeah. It's us. Because we have to believe and jump. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Another point in that final paragraph as well is that it says, <clears throat> you never feel that it's necessary to take anything from anybody else. It takes competition completely out of the picture and we can all work together as a team and build the lives that we want and support each other and i just love that okay where which where was that i kind of where did you see that that's in the last uh, towards the end of the last paragraph towards the end of the last paragraph okay uh, she's talking about <clears throat> uh, the word effort, um, not using not using effort in the visualization. Right, the right. Outcomes of it. Um, it's not intended to convey the idea of strain. All study and meditation should be without strain or tension. 
uh, word picture becomes supreme. Nothing can shake it. You never feel the necessity to take anything from anyone else. You've learned that asking and seeking have as their correlatives receiving and finding. I like that too. I love that whole last paragraph. Yeah, you learned that asking and seeking have as their correlatives receiving and finding. Asking and seeking. Yeah, I, I, have a, I have a question. What, um, this person, the writer, she, she is already not here anymore, isn't it? Yeah, or she <clears> is throat> 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 I think she, this was written in 40s, 47 or something, was it? No, no, no. no. no I actually I found that the original title is Your Invisible Power Presentation of the Mental Science of Judge Thomas Troward by Jennifer Ferrand. And it was originally published in 1921 by uh, the Elizabeth Town uh, Company Incorporated in Holyoke, Massachusetts. Now, Elizabeth Town still actually exists, uh, the publishing company. And I tried to see if I could find a proper original of this. And, but it was first published in 1921. The, um, at the end of the forward there, it says, GB, which I'm presuming is Genevieve yeah. Brand, Los Angeles, yeah. California, May 1929. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that might have been the publishing of this version. Yeah. yeah. I, I asked I ask that because we are talking with her by reading her words. Yeah. We are soaking her, her, her wisdom or her insights, etc. And I will, I, I would like to it's not for proof, but I would like to see her work, her, her life, how she used this. Because if uh, I see her life and I see that she has uh, used this to her, improve her own life to, to do that, then that is, that is, um, that's a good sign. She tells some fairly remarkable stories in the book about how she, um, manifested twenty thousand dollars to go and be the only student of brand. Probably. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Twenty five thousand yeah, dollars yeah. is a lot of money in uh, in, in the twenties. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. This wasn't even in the twenties. So when she manifested the money, it wasn't in the twenties because you got to remember she went to see Troward. Now Troward was a judge in Germany, and what he did, she had to go to Germany. He studied with him. What he did was he was no sorry, he was in India and then England. He, was, he was in England, yeah. Um all oh right, now I remember what I'm thinking of. He was a judge in India, he grew up in India. Now um ah Nick, there's something I wanted to send to you. I need to find it again. It's actually a series by Morgan Freeman. Um and it's uh, finding it's called finding God, but there is so much in it. You sent one it to me. I I listened to that part. Did and you? Do you know what his message is there? Let go and let God. Exactly, but no, no, no. That, that was one little bit. There was another one that I forgot to send you, which is about uh, the yogi. Ah. Uh, and that's that's when it suddenly struck me because he goes to India a lot. You see, Morgan Freeman, and he, he goes to different places and he goes to India. And I was as I was watching it, I thought. Trouble suddenly came to my head, and I'm listening to what he's saying, and I thought that is what Trouble learned. That is why he was able to do what he did, and that is why it all happened. And that's where it all started from in, in India. Everything came from India. Yeah, that's why that's I'm excited about to Kathy today. She's having an appointment with an Indian homeopath. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yes, and we'll get some goodies from her next week. Oh, right on. Okay, that, that, then. Sorry, I have to run because I have that date. <laughs> oh, well, have fun. I'm excited for you. Yeah. Whatever happens, just jump. Yes. <laughs> jump. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, I'll, let, I'll let you know. We will do some visualizing for you. <laughs> that could be scary. <laughs> okay, talk to you guys later. Bye, Cheryl. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. So by, by, by looking at their lives, at her life, yeah. 
it, it, it is also, I mean, everybody who's listening to this, uh, this tape also, it will know that the stuff we are, uh, we are, we are reading here and uh, discussing here, it's not uh, somebody who just wrote <laughs> these poems, <laughs> this, this book, but somebody who, who basically probably has experienced this, has put this. Rene, Genevieve Berend, before she even reached Troward, she, had, she believed, she knew that there was something out there that, uh, that works. Now, the thing is, is that because she was religious, she, she accepted the religion to be able to do this as well. And you'll understand what I'm talking about later on in the book, okay? It, there's a, a lot of stuff in there that you've got to read in between. There's a lot in between the lines. But mm -hmm. the most amazing thing that I realized about Genevieve is that imagine being able to manifest $20,000 in the early, late 1800s, early 1900s, whenever she went to see him, I think it was late, late 1800s, which is a massive amount of money, but she did it through methods she doesn't describe. But then she goes to see Troward, who's come from India, and when you look at the, the thought process over there, and what, what I learned just listening to uh, this series, then it the impact that it would have had on her life and on everybody else's life afterwards, when they came across her, she wouldn't even have had to explain anything because it, I believe it would have been visual in her. You would have been able to see what she was saying. She was the physical manifestation of what she teaches because there was so much belief in what she was saying that that is the energy and that's the vibration and everything that she was giving out. If you read, you can, there's a few things about her life later on, but there isn't a lot because everything, what she did was she went around the country and she taught this. And the majority of people that took this on, and this is one of the biggest keys, you, as an individual, we have to take this on and accept it for what it is. You know, it's like one and one is two. It's just as simple as that. Don't try to try and understand it. You just take it for what it is. It just is. And when you do that, instead of trying to analyze it, which is what I did and why it took me so long to get to where I am now, things just start to work. And they work very, very quickly. The minute you let go, literally, you let go, let it be, start listening, open your ears, and realize that you're getting messages, things work very, very quickly. Thanks. Thanks. And this goes back to that little conversation we're having before Storyteller. I'm waiting for the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great, awesome. Cool. Awesome call. Thank Great. you. Thank Cheers, you. Nate. Cheers. Thank you very much, Nick. And for Have the people, thank you, you too. For the people listening, Nick, I will log on. I, I will log on. I will log on in uh, in uh, for the accountability. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's be accountable to believing in jumping this week. Yes, it's time. Right. It's time. For anyone listening to the recording, if you'd like to join in these calls, you can private message me on Facebook, Nicole Huddleston. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night. Have a good one. Bye-bye.